Okay guys, today we're going to have a video which looks at how to write what we call ionic equations. We've looked already how to write formula. We've looked at how to write balanced symbol equations. We now need to move on to what are called ionic equations. Now ionic equations are different from balanced symbol equations but they are derived from balanced symbol equations. They're different in the fact that what we do is we remove what we call spectator ions. Now spectator ions are ions which essentially do nothing, play no role in the chemical reaction. So as far as you're concerned at the minute, if you see a reaction occurring, if we write out a reaction, you probably suspect, so if we take hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, uh, we will get sodium chloride and we will get water. Now at the minute, you're probably of the opinion that everything in here and everything in here chemically changes to that and that and that's fair enough from what you know so far but in actual fact that is not exactly what happens if we were to break this down what we would actually see is that the hydrochloric acid the H plus ion in the hydrochloric acid reacts with the hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide and we get a molecule of water the chloride ion here starts off as a Cl minus ion and the sodium ion in the sodium hydroxide starts off as an Na plus ion and they actually in sodium chloride which is soluble they are also sodium ions and chloride ions aqueous. So if we look at that you can see that the chloride ion from here is exactly the same as the chloride ion here. The sodium ion here is exactly the same as the sodium ion here. So in actual fact during the chemical reaction that we've written as our full balanced symbol equation up here these two have not changed. They are therefore referred to as spectator ions because essentially they float around in solution here they float around in solution here and they have not changed from here to here so <clears throat> we've got to develop the skills to work out what are spectator ions and what are not spectator ions and therefore when we can do that we can create what is called our ionic equation this is there for our ionic equation okay so we tidied that all up into one nice equation. Okay, right. So there are a certain set of rules that we have to follow, or we don't have to follow, but it's good practice that you do follow these guys. And if you follow these, you should be able to write ionic equations and get rid of spectator ions. Okay, so I'll zoom in on these. You should have a copy of these. Um, if you don't have a copy of these, you can get a copy of them from um, my, myself or Mrs. Buchanan. Okay, so an ionic equation shows the essential chemistry involved in a reaction. An ionic equation enables us to make generalizations about a reaction and pick out the species which have lost or gained electrons. Okay, so in other words, the species that have actually reacted. Okay. An ionic equation is obtained from the full equation, hence the reason why we need to be able to write those, by removing the unreacting ions, which are called spectator ions. Okay, so this is our little method here. It's broken down into seven points. Okay, so the only thing that appears in an ionic equation are substances which change charge, oxidation number, type of bonding, or physical state. Don't worry at GCSE level about oxidation number. At A level, that you will have to understand that. Right, so the first thing that we need to do is write out the ba balanced full symbol equation with state symbols. Okay, so let's do that. We'll take the one that we had earlier. We'll take hydrochloric acid and we'll take sodium hydroxide. Okay, and we should know that hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide react together to give us sodium chloride and water. So hydrochloric acid, acids by definition are aqueous, alkalis 
by definition are aqueous, which means they're floating, they're dissolving water. Sodium chloride is an aqueous salt. You might have to refer to the data sheet on the reverse side of your periodic table in order to work out whether the salt is soluble or not. And water, the common mistake is that people write water as aqueous, which means dissolved in water. Water is liquid. Okay, the next thing we do is that we have to go to point three there and point three says rewrite the equation with all ionic compounds and acids note split into their individual ions including state symbols so we've got to go through this find out which things are ionic compounds and acids and work out what ions are actually involved in there so let's do that well that is an acid so we're going to do that okay sodium hydroxide is ionic so that's going to have to be split up into its ions. Sodium chloride is ionic. That's going to have to be split up into its ions. And uh, water okay, is not ionic nor is an acid. So we will just leave that for the meantime. We'll come back to it. So what ions make up hydrochloric acid? Well, hydrochloric acid, hopefully, you know, are made up of hydrogen ions, which are aqueous. Just the state symbol here just carries down. Chloride ions are aqueous. Sodium ions here are obviously aqueous, as are hydroxide ions. This is why it's important that we've, you can write formula, you can write balanced simple equations, because otherwise you won't know what the ions are that make these things up. Sodium ions in the sodium chloride are aqueous, as are the chloride ions. Okay, so that's part three done. We split them all up into the ions. Okay, so basically, it's like writing formula but in reverse. We take the ion, instead of combining the ions together to make a formula, we take the formula, we split it up into its ions. So part four, or part four then. Metallic and covalently bonded substances remain unchanged except acids, which we've already dealt with, and should be placed in the equation with the ions from step three. Well, there's no, nothing in here that's metallically bonded because metallic bonding deals with just pure metals. There is a covalently bonded substance, which is water, and we just bring covalently bonded substances down. This is why it's important that you know about bonding as well, guys, because uh, if you didn't know this was covalently bonded, you might try to split it up into ions. So covalently bonded substances are things made up of non-metals only, okay, which that is. Right, let's go to step five then. Step five says remember that any element has no charge oops, sorry, and should be placed in the equation with species from steps in steps three and four. Well, there's no pure elements in here, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay. This time, part six, we're going to circle anything which has changed charge. Oxidation number, we don't need to worry about state or type of bonding. Well, let's have a look. Has the hydrogen changed charge or type of bonding? Well, it has. It's gone from being a plus one ion to being in a covalently bonded substance. So, therefore, indeed, the water, or sorry, the hydrogen ion, which we have there, is indeed going to have to go in. If we look over here, has the chloride ion changed? No, it's chloride aqueous to chloride aqueous. Has the sodium ion changed? Sodium plus aqueous to sodium plus aqueous? No. Has the hydroxide ion changed? There's no hydroxides over here. It has been incorporated into the water. And that's us done. The last thing we do then is we take the circled species only and we bring them down and we rewrite as H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous to give us H2O liquid and that is it. Done. We have removed all the spectator ions. There, 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 there. Okay, and that is our final ionic equation. Okay, so we'll do another few of these guys and hopefully by the end of it you have got a pretty good idea of how to do these. I think at GCSE level they're going to be asked in a fairly simple format. Uh, they'll be a bit more difficult at A level. But it's very important that you are able to do them because students will find them difficult. So if you want to get your A star grade and your A grade, you need to be able to set yourself apart to a certain extent from other students.
Okay guys, so we're going to look at a few worked examples of ionic equations just taking into play the rules that we've looked at in the previous part of the video. Okay, so the key things that you're going to need are the ionic equations, the, the seven rules that I have given you for writing them. Okay, you'll need a periodic table because you'll have to write some formula. So you should already know how to write formula. You'll need the sheet of formula of positive and negative ions again to write formula. And the other thing that you will need is the solubility table from the reverse of your periodic table to tell you whether things are or are, are not soluble so that you can put the correct state symbols on. Okay, now I won't be referring to this. I, I, I won't be bringing it back into play. Um, I'll just be telling you whether things are or are not soluble and putting the correct state symbol on. Okay, um, now what I suggest you do again is if you feel comfortable and you think you, you can do these is to just have a have a look at the question that I write out and then from that Go, pause the video, go and do the question and then come back and check it along with my answer. Okay, so we'll do a few of these and hopefully by the end of it you have uh, mastered them. Okay, so the first one we're going to start off with is aqueous silver nitrate. It's really important that you read the question here. Okay, so the word aqueous or solution tells me that the state symbol is aqueous. Reacting with Hydrobromic acid, remember all acids are aqueous. Hydrobromic is a strange word, but it's just hydrochloric, you know, unfamiliar with the GHCl, so hydrobromic must be HBr. Produces a precipitate of hydrogen bromide, sorry, silver bromide, and nitric acid. All acids, remember, are aqueous. So, then we've got to work out what are the Ions. Remember, step two tells us that we have to work. Or sorry, step three says we have to work out all the ions. Split all the ionic compounds up. Split all the acids up. Well, let's have a look. Ionic compound, metal, non-metal. Yes. Ionic compound, no, but it is an acid. Ionic compound, yes. Ionic compound, no, but it is an acid. Now, be careful here. This is a solid. So we don't split it up into its ions because remember these things are only split into their ions when they are aqueous because when they are aqueous that's exactly what happens. The ions separate from each other. So we're going to keep anything that's solid together as a solid. Okay, so what is the ion in here? Well silver, you should know, is a, is a plus one ion. Okay, that can be found on your table here. Okay, and it's state symbol is aqueous. We're now on to stage three. Okay, and there is also in there a nitrate ion. Again, that is in the table. Hydrogen bromide is an H plus ion and a Br minus ion. Okay, silver bromide, remember, solid, we keep it all together. Plus Nitric acid is an H plus ion plus a nitrate ion which is aqueous. Right, well let's find the things which have not changed. Silver plus aqueous here, silver plus silver ion solid here. They have changed. Nitrate nitrate ion here, NO3 minus aqueous, NO3 minus aqueous. Okay. That is a spectator ion. H plus ion aqueous, H plus ion aqueous, that's a spectator ion. Bromide ion aqueous, bromide ion solid. Okay, therefore my ionic equation is a silver ion reacting with a bromide ion to give me something which has changed state, silver bromide solid. And that is indeed your final answer. Okay, moving on, we're going to react 
zinc solid zinc metal in other words with copper sulfate which is aqueous so the question might say a solution of copper sulfate to make a solution of silver or sorry zinc sulfate and pure copper okay if the examiner does not tell you whether the product is or is not soluble you'll have to go to your solubility tables so for example here we would have said soluble most sulfates are soluble except lead and barium well that means that zinc sulfate must be soluble it's not lead or barium sulfate so we know that the state symbol is aqueous so let's again go down and we'll apply our rules okay so again what we need to do is to we rewrite the uh, equation with all the ionic substances and any acids split into their individual ions including state symbol step three the other ones are just writing the equation we've already done that okay so and step step four I'm going to incorporate into this step as well step four just tells me that anything that is uh, metallic and covalently bonded substances remain unchanged except acids and should be placed in the equation with the ions from step three so we do have a metallic substance in here and we'll deal with that now the metallic substance hopefully you know is zinc so that's metallic that's ionic that's ionic metal non-metal metal non-metal and that's also metallic so we have zinc solid we just put that straight in plus copper copper is a two plus ion okay plus sulfate is a two negative ion they're all aqueous these here because they're aqueous at the top goes to zinc zinc is a two plus ion and sulfate as you know from over there is a two negative ion if you're wondering where i'm getting the charges in these ions from guys it's from here yeah from your table here, zinc, copper, sulfate, okay, and also from your periodic table, uh, and copper. Right, so the pure metals, look, they just remain unchanged, they're not ions. Things only become ions when they react. These things are pure, they're not reacted, so they're not charged. Okay, let's go through it. Zinc is a solid here, it's now 2 plus aqueous, so that is going to be in my ionic equation. Copper is 2 plus aqueous here. It's copper solid here. That's also going to be in my ionic equation. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus aqueous here. And it's SO4 2 minus aqueous here. So they're not going to be in my ionic equation. So it's zinc solid plus copper aqueous goes to zinc 2 plus aqueous plus copper solid that's my final ionic equation okay okay right moving on then we will go to barium chloride okay and we'll just use the solubility tables just to give you guys a bit of a practice at it so barium chloride is it soluble well it tells me here in my table that most Chlorides are soluble except silver, lead. Okay, well, barium chloride is not silver or lead. So it is indeed solid. Okay, plus sodium sulfate. Okay, is sodium sulfate soluble? Well, again, let's have a look. It tells me that most sulfates are soluble except lead and barium sulfate. Well, it's not lead and barium sulfate. So my state symbol is aqueous. Okay. And that will give me barium sulfate. Okay. Barium sulfate. Let's have a look. Soluble. Most sulfates except lead and barium are soluble. Well, barium sulfate is my product. It's not soluble. So therefore, state symbol, solid. Plus sodium cl chloride. Sodium chloride is hopefully is common table salt. And it is, of course, soluble. Right. Let's go through it and see what is ionic, okay? That's ionic, that's ionic, that's ionic, that's ionic. Metal, non-metal, and then metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal, etc. Let's split it into its ions. Barium is in group 2, and is therefore a 2 plus ion that's aqueous. 
chloride. Now this is where people will lose marks. They will write chloride ions as Cl2 minus. They are not. A chloride ion is Cl minus. We happen to have two of them. Okay, so be careful with that. Plus sodium. It's not Na2 plus. It's you've got two sodiums in that sodium sulfate. It's two Na pluses, each of which are aqueous. Your sulfate ion is two minus. A lot of people lose marks, guys, because they forget about their sulfate ions. They start splitting this up into sulfur and oxygen. Now that's not not the case. You should know better than that. Okay, you've spent time writing formulas. So you should recognize a sulfate ion, a nitrate ion, a sulfide ion, etc, etc. To give you barium ions, which again are 2 plus, but the state symbol this time has changed, remember? Okay, and remember, sorry, when they're solid, we just write them all as one. We don't split them up anymore. Plus 2 NaCl, so we've got 2 Na pluses, okay, which are aqueous, and we have 2 Cl minus which are aqueous. So we've quite a lot of information in front of us now guys to go through. Okay, so let's do it. We've got barium 2 plus aqueous here. Barium is now a solid. Okay, that will be in my ionic equation. So will this. 2 chloride minus ions aqueous, 2 chloride minus ions aqueous. Let's just get rid of them. Okay. 2 sodium ions aqueous, 2 sodium ions aqueous. Get rid of them. Okay. Bear, we have a sulfate ion 2 minus aqueous. The sulfate is now solid. So we'll just bring that over to here. Barium 2 plus aqueous plus the sulfate ion gives my barium sulfate. That's my ionic equation. Okay. Next one that we're going to have a look at then is nitric acid okay plus ammonium hydroxide goes to ammonium nitrate again read the question carefully look for words like aqueous look for words like solution Okay, look for words like precipitate. Precipitate means solid. That tells you immediately the state symbol without you having to go to here. Right, let's have a look. We have ammonium. I just wrote aqueous because this is nitric acid and you should know by now that acids are aqueous. So we have ammonium hydroxide. Soluble. Okay, so our first row here says all ammonium salts are soluble. So ammonium hydroxide is aqueous. This is ammonium nitrate. We apply the same rule. And water, remember, is not aqueous, it's liquid. Okay, so step three in your set of rules tells you to rewrite uh, the equation but split up all the ionic substances and all of the uh, acids. Well, that's an acid, so it's going to be split up. This is ionic, okay. Ammonium is not a metal, but it form, it's an NH4 plus ion, so it does form ionic, okay. And this is covalent water, you should know it's two normal metals. And it's covalent. Let's split up my nitric acid. Nitric acid is H plus ions, which are aqueous, plus NO3 minus ions are aqueous. Okay, the formula of the ion is in the reverse of the periodic table. Same for the ammonium ion, NH4 plus. Hydroxide ions are aqueous. Okay, ammonium ions. NH4 plus aqueous nitrate ions, NO3 minus aqueous, and, and if you look at step 4 in the rules, it tells you to bring any covalent substances and just pop them down into the equation. Let's go through this and find what and what is and is not spectator. H plus aqueous, well, there's no sign of it over here, so that's going to go into my equation. It's gone into the water. Nitrate ion aqueous, nitrate ion aqueous. Let's just get rid. Ammonium ion aqueous, ammonium ion aqueous. Spectator ion. Hydroxide ion, sorry, I didn't get rid of them. Hydroxide ion aqueous, no sign of it over here. It's gone into the water. So I have 
H plus ion aqueous plus OH minus ion aqueous to give me water liquid. So from a very complicated looking full equation, a very complicated looking full ionic equation, we have really quite a simple little ionic equation to tell the story of what's going on in there. That is the ionic equation that you will get for any acid with any alkali, any metal hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide. You'll always get that at this level. That will be your answer. So if you're switched on enough to work that out, well then you won't have much work to do. This time we're going to look at a solution of calcium hydroxide. So I, I told you it's a solution so you can pop aqueous straight in, reacting with sulfuric acid which is H2SO4. Acids are always aqueous, they only behave as acids when dissolved in water. To give me calcium sulfate. Okay. And calcium sulfate is solid, insoluble, and we also get from that water. So 2H2O liquid. Okay, now some of you who are on the ball, alright will be able to look at this and probably work this out straight away. If you look here, everything over here is aqueous and everything over here is solid and liquid. So there has been a complete change of state the whole way across. So in actual fact, my this entire equation is the answer. There's nothing to be done. So please don't go through the whole rigmarole of splitting everything up into ions, etc. Okay, it's not necessary. Aqueous, aqueous, solid, liquid. Everything must have changed. Okay, right, we're going to take sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate, if we go to our table, is insoluble. Okay, remember to read the, equa the question carefully, guys, because you might look in the table and something might be insoluble. Okay, in fact, sodium carbonate is indeed a bit soluble, and according to your table, it's soluble, but the question here is solid sodium carbonate is added to so don't go and just look at the table read the question okay? even though something soluble it may not be in water as a solution at the start so it gives me hydrochloric acid and that will produce sodium chloride as the salt because I'm using hydrochloric acid sodium chloride is indeed soluble plus carbon dioxide which is a gas plus we're going to produce some water there Okay, which is a liquid. So this is the first one we've had with a gas. So there's a definite change in state there. So again, let's pick out our ionic and our acids. That's ionic, that's acid, that's ionic, that's covalent, and that's covalent. Right, so if we look at rule three in your list, you've got two Na plus ions, which are both solid, and you have a carbonate ion, which is also solid, obviously. You have two H plus ions here, which are aqueous and remember two chloride ions which are also aqueous to give us two sodium uh, ions okay plus two Cl oops minus ions which are aqueous plus CO2 which is a gas, so we're on to step 4, bringing all the covalent substances down and that as well, in fact I'm going to change this guys, I'm going to make that a solution of sodium carbonate ok, so I'm going to change the state symbols here alright right, so we'll say the examiner said it was a solution of sodium carbonate reacting with acid ok, so Let's go through it again. We have two Na plus aqueous here. Oops, I didn't put the state symbol in there. It's aqueous. Okay, so with that, therefore, is a spectator ion. We have a carbonate ion here, but there's no carbonate ion over here. So that's going to go into my, it's actually gone into the carbon dioxide. We have two H plus ions aqueous here. Well, there's no H plus ions aqueous over here. Okay, we have two chloride ions aqueous here, and we have the same here. So they must be spectator ions. So if we bring everything down, we have a carbonate ion, which is aqueous, plus two H plus ions, which are also aqueous, 
our products this time are carbon dioxide which is a gas and water liquid and that's our final ionic equation okay so you have a reasonable amount of processing to do here guys to get to the final answer but I will guarantee you that these will be worth uh, quite a few marks okay let's have a look then at potassium oops sorry just pure potassium metal which is obviously a solid okay and we're going to react the potassium metal with water which is liquid okay and we will get from that potassium hydroxide which is aqueous and we will get hydrogen gas all right so have a little look at it first thing you should have picked up was it solid liquid aqueous gas everything has changed state here so therefore the uh, that is the equation that's the answer everything has changed in this instance there are no spectator ions so hopefully some of you cottoned on to that before you did it all right um okay guys well i think um we will do we'll do one more and then that will do us okay hopefully you've been pausing this video and doing these and then coming back and checking if not please go back through the video now okay or there are lots of websites where you can practice uh, writing your ionic equations um, and I would suggest that you make your way to those uh, and find out and check your understanding of this so we have that's the equation that's water at the end okay so let's have a look let's go through it and find our step three of our rules and find our ionic and our acids well that's that's just pure metallic that is acid that is ionic um, we have covalent and we have covalent so remember we all said we start off and deal with our ionic and our acids so we have eight H pluses which are obviously aqueous plus we have sorry there should be a three in there it's nitric acid we have eight NO three minuses again they are aqueous and they will go to ionic we have three copper ions here okay remember copper ions are two positive okay all we have to do there is go to our table okay and they are aqueous of course and we have three times two which is six nitrate ions again they are aqueous okay if we look at step four in our uh, set of instructions or rules metallic and covalently bonded substances remain unchanged and they just come straight down so we'll bring our copper from here so three Cu solids okay covalently bonded substance so we will bring our carbon dioxide which is a gas down to there and sorry we have um, carbon dioxide sorry our nitrogen monoxide down to there and our water okay so let's go through it and see if we can pick out our spectator ions all right now we have eight H pluses here which are aqueous well there's no sign of them over there so they couldn't be spectator ions we have eight nitrate ions here we have six of them here so we've got a bit of an issue here we need to be very careful here that means that six of these are spectator ions but two of them must be doing something else hopefully you're all able to see the two nitrogen monoxides made here so they must be going to that copper here is a solid copper over here is aqueous with a two plus charge on it so therefore that is involved in our equation okay so let's have a look at what we have left over now so those have changed those have changed these are obviously being produced those nitrate ions are the six nitrate ions that I should get rid of because they were the six that were unchanged over here 
and that is my final ionic equation. That final one, guys, is a fairly difficult one, and if you were able to do that, well done. Okay, so we're going to leave it there. That is indeed ionic equations done. Um, uh, if you can do those, believe me, anything that you get at GCSE will indeed be fairly straightforward.